I've been really interested in abstract art lately and specifically expressive paintings where there's an aspect of the painting that has a meaning or an aspect of it that is figurative as in you can recognize elements of it but having it be very bold, very expressive to the point where it becomes almost abstract. A while ago I did a series of landscapes in that kind of way it was very interesting. I really loved it. I explored a whole bunch of different techniques, different palettes. I want to continue in that vein, but I also want to delve deeper into what makes an abstract painting successful, interesting, beautiful. From what I'm seeing, there's a lot of beautiful time lapse of abstract art on the internet, but there's not as much how to get there, what makes it successful. And that's what I'm interested in. Today, I'm focusing on the dripping technique. I'll show you in a minute. I'll use the technique in an expressive slash abstract landscape. My reference photos are from where I was born in the countryside. And I'm not gonna stick necessarily to the photos or I don't know if I will, I may or may not. It's just a starting point of inspiration and I'm gonna kind of let the process take over a little bit. All right, let's go. I'm using an 18 by 24 watercolor paper by Strathmore. It's unprimed, so just the paper. When it comes to the dripping technique, this is the magical tool, a spray bottle. Using it to spray a bunch of water, letting it drip. It's going to create messes on my wall, but I'm set up to accept that the wall is getting messed up, of course. But obviously I could also use an easel with some tarp on the floor to catch the drippage or plastic, whatever, to protect the wall. I don't care, it's my studio. Obviously, there's not a lot of precision when it comes to this technique. A lot of it is random, which is fun, and it's an aspect that I like. But there's still some control to be had with the amount of water you put and the amount of pressure of the, the spray. So the closer you get, the more pressure it'll be. So the more diluted the water will be, there'll be a lot more water and it can kind of blend a lot more. Whereas if there's less water and from um, far away you can just have a few streams and it creates different effects you could also choose to put it in certain areas like i could have put it only in a darker bottom um, section of my painting to have drippage only in that section there's also the option of wiping things with a rag when it's kind of like halfway dried to remove some paints and have the streaks really show or to leave them dry as is where there would be layers of stream go going on the painting. If I were to wipe this, I could remove and lift paint so the white of the paper would show and that's the type of drippage I would get. And if I leave it like this, it would dry basically like this. I could do a little bit of both. Most of it is trial and error, but sometimes you find kind of like your own recipe that is really interesting. And the process is pretty fun.
I'm satisfied with where I'm at right now. Now I'm gonna do a bold move. It could be a mistake, but I don't care. I want to experiment and that's how I do things. I go bold even if it means that things don't look as good after my move as they did before. But that's how I discover really cool things. So even if it doesn't work out, it was worth the try. I'm gonna to try to wipe a section of the drippage. I think I'm gonna try, maybe not to wipe, but blob and lift some paint if I can, if it's not too dry, see what it looks like. I'm pretty satisfied with the sky, even though it might be a little bit overworked, my Achilles heel, but let's try to lift some paint here, see what it gives. Obviously we have two techniques here. There's dripping, but there's also lifting. This is what I just did with um, a moist towelette. It creates two very different texture. It looks very messy, but I'm hoping that once I put in a bit of detail, like tree, a tree line, and we remove the tape, it'll kind of come together. I left it a little bit too long to dry. If I had done it a little sooner, we would have seen the streaks of paint, like the lifting would have been cleaner. But still, by lifting some sections, I feel like it's creating some planes in the meadow. Let's call this meadow. I'm gonna keep going. So I let this dry overnight and I'm ready to take off the tape, the most satisfying part, and look at the painting. But looking at the painting, I'm seeing how bold everything is. And one of my aim is to have things a bit more subtle, more minimalistic, and I have trouble doing that. So I thought it would be really interesting to redo it really fast, but dial it down like five notches. And I'm not gonna put you through this, through the magic of editing. Let's just get this one redone a lot more minimalistic if possible right now. Bam, there it is. I'm gonna take off the tape and we'll talk about it. This first painting is obviously super dramatic, very expressive and bold. I like how the dripping effect worked and I added a lot more texture to it. I didn't leave it as is, but I do love how we see it, but in a subtle way in the background where I put on top of it some um, palette knife texture. I 
blended some sections i wiped away some other sections and then i reworked with brush strokes on top of it so there's a lot of back and forth creating a lot of texture on top of that dripping because i use dark colors and bold colors and because of the sky it gives a very moody stormy feeling to the piece which i like i also really like the magenta i put in the foreground i think it breaks it up as well as the white it gives a little bit of pop to me the dripping technique in this composition really works but i really wanted to try it in a more minimal way like i mentioned so i'm glad i did the second one i dialed everything down as much as possible to where I had a lot lighter colors. The colors are still saturated, but they're more pastel-y. As you can see, I kept the tree line a lot farther in the horizon. So I kept my trees or mountains, whatever you want to call them, because it's kind of like an abstract type of composition. I kept it small, so they appear very far away in the horizon and a lot more minimal. Also in the foreground, I didn't touch much of the dripping. I used the dripping technique, let it dry completely and reworked only the top section of the meadow where I added some pigment with a brush, but I left most of that dripping intact, didn't go back and touch it. It gives a very different effect to the first painting. Do I love it more? I don't know. I think they're so different. I wouldn't necessarily say that I love one more than the other. I can say though that I prefer this sky in the lighter painting. It's more airy. I was able to get more depth. And because I had that very bold sky in the first one, it made the painting a certain way that was not necessarily super intentional. Personally, I prefer skies to be a little bit more minimal, I'm noticing, or at least I haven't found a way to have a very stormy or cloudy sky that I like. And when it comes to the dripping technique, I think that in this more sunny and lighter painting, it's interesting. I really like it. I don't think it's necessary a technique that would add that much to a piece that would be like a sunny day or a very bright and light kind of feeling. I think a dripping technique would add more moodiness and storminess to something like this that is a lot darker and bolder. But overall, I really like the color palette that I chose and I think they work really well together as a duo on the wall. If you'd like more inspiration, you can go watch this video. If you want to follow me a little bit more on the daily, I post on Instagram stories. You can go check things out there and I'll see you in just a few days for another one. Thanks for watching.